So we all know what happened with 9-11, but there's this forgotten story really of what happened six years before 9-11 that kind of foreshadowed what was to come. This was a terror plot that was actually crafted in the Philippines in Manila. And if it wasn't for a small twist in faith, this would have been a terror attack that would have been far, far bigger. I'm Alice D'Souza, and I've recently produced an episode called 20 Years Since 9-11, The Philippines. The assignment was to look at the terror landscape in the Philippines over 20 years since 9-11. There was this one word that constantly kept coming up, bujinka, 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 and it actually meant loud explosion or big bang. The bujinka plot was a plot to blow up 11 passenger planes that were traveling from Asia to the United States over the Pacific. Like 9-11, the money trail for the Bujinga plot traces back to Osama bin Laden. Now, the mastermind of the Bujinga plot is the same individual who also is the architect of the 9-11 attacks. When Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was in his 30s, he traveled to Manila. And this was the time when he had in mind to go ahead and execute the Bujinga plot. His nephew, Ramsey Yusuf was the man on the ground. The two of them really teamed up here to make sure that Bajinga was possible. Ramsey Yusuf had a track record that went back to the World Trade Center bombing in 1993. He was behind that attack. The Bajinga plot was to pan out in three parts in early 1995. First, assassinate Pope John Paul II, who was visiting Manila at that time. The idea was to create confusion with the assassination of the Pope, experts say, and then quickly launch your second phase. Part two was to blow up 11 passenger jets traveling from Asia to the United States. They would explode over the Pacific. One of the terrorists was supposed to fly on a United Airlines flight from Singapore to Hong Kong, and during this leg, he would place an uh, explosive on board the aircraft, get off in Hong Kong. The bomb would be primed to blow up over the Pacific en route to Los Angeles. And the third phase of the attack was to crash a plane into the CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and Ramzi Youssef needed to make sure that their plan was foolproof. So what they did was conducted a test run a few weeks before the arrival of the Pope in Manila. PAL 434 bound for Tokyo. Ramzi Youssef took the flight from Manila going to Cebu. He placed a bomb under the seat in the aircraft and then he disembarked at Cebu. And the plane then flew from Cebu to Tokyo, but then the explosion happened mid-air. We heard the loud explosion, the plane really banked to the right. The smoke of the gunpowder is really obvious that everybody can smell it. One Japanese passenger was killed. I saw a hole. He was sunk on that hole. And I, I pulled him out, but definitely he's dead already. It happened 26 years ago, December 11, 1994. Even at my age right now, I'm 69, and yet I cannot forget what really happened on that day. If this plot had gone ahead, the Bajinga plot, you were looking at around 4,000 people dead. And compare this to all those who died on 9-11, 3,000 people. Many of these passengers would have been Singaporeans, Malaysians, Indonesians, Filipinos. So in many ways, the Bajinga plot was very much a proof of concept for Al-Qaeda for what transpired several years later in September 11. So this was a very significant plot in the history of international terrorism. Ramzi Youssef and an associate were mixing chemicals, presumably for a bomb when a fire went off in their apartment that they were renting in Manila. Ramzi Youssef and the associate fled. The police arrived and that's when they found this treasure trove of evidence, really. You had Bibles, you had vestments or cassocks, robes that Catholic priests would wear, presumably to be used for the assassination of Pope John Paul II. They also found a laptop with great amount of evidence 
With regards to the blowing up of the 11 jet planes across the Pacific, they found flight schedules and also details of how a plane would be used to crash into the CIA headquarters, which would have really been the first time where a plane would have been used as a weapon of terrorism or a missile. And again, let's not forget, this was all found six years prior to 9-11. American intelligence officials at that time, they could not believe that such kind of plan would be crafted in the Philippines. That's why in the findings of the 9-1-1 Commission report, the finding was intelligence failure because intelligence is information. And then of course, six years later, 9-11 happened. So you're probably wondering why was the Philippines picked for the Bajinka plot? It was actually a very natural fit. First, we have to remember that there was a long history between Al-Qaeda and members of the Abu Sayyaf group, which means that they knew that they could call on the Abu Sayyaf group for help. The Abu Sayyaf group is one of the most notorious groups to come out of the Philippines. There was a personal connection between Osama bin Laden and the founder of the Abu Sayyaf group. The two men had reportedly fought alongside each other against the Soviet Union in Afghanistan in the 1980s. As Al-Qaeda started to rise in prominence on the global stage, the Abu Sayyaf group took ideological inspiration, funding, and training from them. In the years after 9-11, Abu Sayyaf launched these really large-scale terror attacks in the Philippines. Today, with Afghanistan under the Taliban control, questions are raised about whether Al-Qaeda could potentially regroup. Would this give rise to a whole new generation of Filipinos going to Afghanistan to fight? Could they come back, bringing back with them terror to the Philippines? And could that affect the rest of Southeast Asia? Essentially, could history repeat itself? That's a question that we put to our experts and worryingly, many of them said yes. Watch the full episode of Insight, 20 years after 9-11, the Philippines. Thanks for watching. Check out some more of our videos on CNA Insider and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.